Hello friends, welcome to this lecture on the course on computer aided power system analysis. We have been discussing the error, error, error analysis regarding the weighted, weighted least square method. So, what we have been doing is so far is this. So, we have been trying to find out that what is the expected value of the estimated errors and we did and we have seen that this expected value of the estimated error can be given by this expression. So, now we will actually start from this point. So, we uh, write that E of E is equal to R minus H G inverse H T. Now, if we now E transpose, I mean E hat is actually V E 1 hat E 2 hat dot 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 E m hat transpose. So, then therefore, E hat and E this thing would be essentially E 1 hat E 2 hat dot 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 E m hat into E 1 hat E 2 hat dot 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 E m hat. So, that can be written as uh, E 1 hat square E 1 hat E 2 hat dot 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 E 1 hat E m hat E 2 hat E 1 hat E 2 hat square dot 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 E 2 hat E m hat and dot 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 E m hat E 1 hat E m hat E 2 hat m hat square. So, this is again a uh, square matrix m cross m. So, this is also a square matrix m cross m. Now, <coughs> so this is a, now R is a diagonal matrix, R is a diagonal matrix, is a diagonal matrix that we know that we have already seen. What about H G inverse H transpose? Now, H we know that H is actually uh, H is M cross M, G inverse is N cross N and H transpose is actually N cross M. So, then therefore, H G inverse H transpose would be M cross N into N cross N because this this N cross M. So, it would be M cross M. Now, depending upon the entries of H matrix as well as the G matrix. So, then therefore, this matrix H G inverse H transpose matrix, we note that H G inverse H transpose matrix is not a diagonal matrix. That is important to note. Now, so, then therefore, because it is not a diagonal matrix, so then therefore, now if I say that 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 this matrix is R dash, so then therefore, R dash is equal to R minus H G inverse H transpose is not a diagonal matrix. Now, what does it mean? Earlier, if we do remember correctly, we said that expected value of 
earlier expected value of E transpose is a diagonal matrix R is a diagonal and why we why would say that it is diagonal because we said that this meters any two meters are independent this is because this is because expected value of E i E j was 0 as these meters are independent. So, it is diagonal, but then, but then this matrix, this matrix is not diagonal, this matrix is R dash is not diagonal, that only means that is not diagonal, that only means that only means that expected value of E i hat E j hat is not equal to 0, that, that is what exactly it means. So, that means what we are trying to say that, that although originally this meters were are independent in nature, but then the, but then the um, estimated value of errors of the meters they are not independent in nature. So, the first conclusion or uh, it is a very important observation. So, then the observation is observation is that although the meters are independent, but the estimated errors of all meters of all the meters are not independent, independent. The question is why that although these meters are independent, we have assumed because we have walked with this, but then, but then the estimated errors of all these meters are not independent. So, why this is so? Now, this is because of this fact that our um, estimated vector x is actually some quantity into z, something into z. I mean, I mean this k matrix we all know. So, it is basically some matrix k into z. So, then therefore, any estimated state vector depends on. So, then therefore, it means that any estimated state depends on all measurements. Although the meters are independent, but any estimated state depends on all measurement, right. And we note that this matrix K is a constant matrix, and we know what this matrix is. This is H G inverse um, H transpose into Z. Now, with this X hat, we find out that this. Then we calculate Z hat matrix, and that as uh, some sorry, I mean Z hat vector. That is nothing but H into X bar hat. So this is the estimated measurement. This is the estimated measurement. Now, we observe that as x bar depends on all measurements, z bar also depends on all measurements.
and then subsequently we calculate the estimated error as z minus z hat. Although this vector is independent, this particular meters are independent, this particular meters are independent, but then this is because this depends on all measurements. So, then therefore, as z hat depends on now again as z hat depends on all measurements e hat also depends on all measurements. And that and because e hat depends on all measurements, so then therefore, any value of e i hat say, so then therefore, any value of e i hat is actually contributed by all meters and as a result, as a result all estimated errors are actually contributed by all meters and then therefore, none of the estimated errors is actually independent of each other, they are all dependent on each other. So, this is the basic reason. We have started with uh, our uh, goal that we wish to um, essentially minimize the function, some function f and so we actually try to minimize the function that it is e i square w i. So, this is what we want to minimize. So, this was our original objective function, this is the original objective function. Now, after we do all our analysis and after we are obtained, uh, after we obtained um, our Mm, estimated states and after that also we obtained our estimated errors and etcetera, etcetera. We would be definitely would be like to know well after we have done all this exercise, what is the value of f? What is the value of f? That is although we done everything to minimize this value of f, but we also would like to know what is the numerical value of f? I mean is this value 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 500 or what? Now, the question is theoretically this value of a is actually dependent on the true error of the meters which is not known to us. So, then therefore, the only option for us to calculate the value a, value of f is to uh, substitute here the estimated value of the errors because we do not know that what is the actual or the true error. So, then therefore, because we wish to calculate the value of a, if we really cannot calculate the value of uh, true value of f, but rather we can only calculate the value of a f with the value of the estimated errors. And so then therefore, because we are we would be able to calculate the value of f with the value of the estimated errors. So then therefore, we can only estimate the value of the objective function. So then therefore, we say that we only are able to estimate the value of the objective function and that would be given by E i hat square into w i. So, this is the estimated value of the objective function. So, we write that this is the estimated value of the value of the objective function. So, this is the estimated value of the objective function. Now, if this is the estimated value of the objective function, now what is its nature? Would this value would be a completely deterministic value or would it be a completely a random value. So, that is the question. Now, we here need to understand that this value of the errors are all actually random. 
So, then therefore, the value of the estimated states which would be calculating at each calculation we also cannot predict. So, then therefore, they would also be random in nature. If this value of the estimated states will be also random in nature, when we say random that means, we would, we would not be able to really predict that what would be their value. So, in a sense they would be random in nature. So, then therefore, when we calculate the value of uh, estimated value of the measurements utilizing those estimated value of states. So, then therefore, this vector z hat would be also a random in nature that means, that we also cannot predict their value and so then therefore, e hat vector that is the estimated error vector will also be a random in nature. So, then as a result f hat will also be random. So, then therefore, I mean when we say it is random it means that if we do the state estimation of a given circuit repeatedly say after 5 minutes and then if we get these values of f hat. So, then these values would not be deterministic at all that means, that we really cannot predict them by any particular formula or equation or anything they would be actually random in nature and because they would be essentially random in nature. So, then therefore, it is quite probable that they would probably have some kind of probability distribution function. So, then therefore, because f hat is a random value that means, if we calculate the value of f hat for a large number of state estimation exercises, they will uh, not follow any particular equation, but they will be random in nature. So, as a result they would definitely follow some uh, certain probability distribution function. So, now we write f hat is actually e i hat square w i. So, we can write it as now what is this i is equal to 1 to m. So, this is i is equal to 1 to m. So, it is z i minus z i hat square by omega i is sigma i square and this is random. So, and f hat is actually random in nature is, uh, is random. Now, because it is random, so then therefore, it must follow, it should follow some certain probability distribution. Now, if we do this exercise for a very large number of times and do plot and do calculate the probability distribution, we find we have, I mean it has been found out that f hat follows uh, chi square, it is called chi square or chi square, chi square probability distribution. F hat follows. So, this is a very important it is extremely important fact we need to remember this that f hat follows something called chi square probability distribution function. So, now the question is what is this chi square probability distribution function. So, let us look at that. So, chi square probability distribution function is given by this. So, this is the chi square probability distribution function. So, what are the characteristics of the chi square probability distribution function? There are several things we can uh, observe. First of all, it is one sided distribution function, it does not go at the uh, I mean a negative side. So, this is an one sided distribution function. So, in contrast with the Gaussian distribution function, please note that in contrast with the uh, Gaussian distribution function. So, we first we note note. So, we take some uh, note here. So, note. So, there are there are some characteristics note. 
some characteristics characteristics about we need to note chi square distribution first is that it is an one sided distribution that is the first observation we make it is not double sided what do we mean by double sided for example if we look at the gaussian distribution function it is something like this so it is basically a double sided distribution function but in contrast chi square distribution is actually something like this so chi square distribution is actually something like this so this is basically gaussian this is gaussian this is this is chi square so you see in contrast to this a gaussian distribution function chi square distribution function is a one sided function second observation we make is that it is actually quite similar to the gaussian distribution function so it is quite similar to although it is one sided but it is quite similar to gaussian distribution function it is quite similar to gaussian distribution function third thing we must um, mention it here third thing is it is characterized by it is characterized by Uh, by a quantity by a quantity called um, k it is called the order and this k is given by m minus n what is m m is number of measurement measurement and n is number of states so so it is actually characterized by something some quantity called k which is basically it is nothing but m minus n so what does it mean it means that see this particular I mean, I mean this particular k is called actually degrees of freedom. So, this k is called is basically it is a degrees of freedom. So, this k is called degree of freedom. What does it mean? That means, for different value of k, we will have different different chi square distribution curve. So, then therefore, suppose for a particular value of k I do have this is my chi square distribution curve. So, let us say that this is for k is equal to k 1 and for let us say some other value of k is equal to k 2 we will have something like this. So, k is equal to k 2 and for some other value of k is equal to k 3 we will have something like this. So, for different value of degree of freedom we will have different graph or other different probability distribution. So, here it is basically shown this graph or this particular probability distribution for a particular degree of freedom which is k. Now, obviously, the uh, total area under the curve would be 1. So, this also we must note. So, our fourth note would be that the total area under the curve note. So, it is the fourth total area under the curve is equal to 1 because after all it is a probability distribution function. So, then therefore, total area under the curve would be 1. Now, if this is total area under the curve is 1. Now, here as it is shown this is actually split 
into two parts, one has got an area is equal to alpha and so then therefore, the rest of them is and so, so then therefore, this is basically the uh, value of 1 minus alpha. Now, what this alpha and 1 minus alpha denote? This value of area alpha says that, I mean if this value of alpha is let us say uh, 0 0.01 suppose if this value of alpha is, is equal to 0 0.01. So, then therefore, this value would be 0 0.99. So, it says that there is a probability of 0 0.01 such that the calculated value of f hat or rather the estimated value of f or rather the calculated value of f hat will cross the threshold value of this, I mean this is called the threshold value. So, then essentially there is something called a table and so then therefore, for a particular degree of freedom k and for a particular value of alpha, there is a certain threshold value, there is a certain threshold value. So, then when we say that I have got an alpha, so then it simply shows that or rather it simply says that there is an 1 percent chance or rather the probability of f hat to be over or rather to be above this particular value or rather to be greater than this particular threshold value is 0 0.01 or other words we can also say that the probability of the value of f hat to be less than this threshold value is 0 0.99 or rather there is a 99 percent chance that the probability of f hat would be less than this particular threshold value. So, now the question is how do we get this particular threshold value and how do I get this particular value of alpha. So, now let us look at that. So, then essentially there is a table. So, this table is like this. So, this table is actually like this and this table shows that, that there is a value of k so, this is nothing but the freedom, freedom uh, so, I mean this I mean these values of k denote nothing but the uh, degree of freedom and this is the value of alpha and these are nothing but the probability that the value of f hat would cross uh, would be this. So, now for example, if my uh, degree of freedom is let us say 2 and if my value of alpha is 0 0.01. So, that means this is the corresponding threshold value this is 9.21. So, then therefore, what does it mean? It means that when I calculate the value of f hat, there is only 1 percent chance that the value of f hat would cross the value this particular value. 9.21. Similarly, there is only 0.5 percent chance or rather the probability of f hat to be greater than 10.6 is only 0 0.005 or in other words, the probability of f hat to be less than 10.6 would be is actually 0.995. Similarly, for any other value of k, for any other value of k and for any particular value of alpha, we can, we do have different values of threshold quantities. So, this is the value of k, this is the value of k and do and we do have this particular threshold values. Now, utilizing these threshold values and this particular threshold value or, or rather this particular chi square distribution is actually very, very useful to us. Now, why how this is useful? At the start of our discussion, we said that the meters whatever we are using for state estimation purpose, they will certainly have errors. Now, it may happen that some meters have developed some problem inside it. So, then therefore, the error with this meter has got exceptionally large, unacceptably large, but we do not know it that which one has got. 
So, then therefore, if we still keep on doing our state estimation with that particular faulty meter, so then whatever estimated values we will get, they would be all very, very wrong. So, then therefore, we need to devise a method, we need to have a method such that we can find out that which particular meter has gone bad or rather we say that we need to find out that which particular measurement value has gone bad. Bad means that it is now containing and very unacceptable value of error. So, then therefore, we need to identify that which measurement data has gone bad or in other words in the parlance of state estimation, we say that we need to devise a method for bad data detection. That means, we need to detect that which particular measurement data has gone bad. So, we need to do something called bad data detection such that we can eliminate that particular meter which has, which has gone bad and so as to make our estimated values acceptable. So, in the next lecture, we would be looking into this aspect. Thank you.